Hello and welcome to another of my Linux Commands for Beginners videos. And in this video, I want to give you guys an introduction to configuring Bash. Bash is the shell that we've been using the entire time, the born again shell. And in Linux, there's several different shells, which is basically the command line interpreter, the thing that interprets the commands that you're typing in. There's several different ones. And Bash is the default on most distributions, so it's what we've been using. But our shell can be customized, and this isn't going to be an extensive video on how to do that, but it is something that I want to show you guys so that you're at least aware of where to go to do this. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here on my laptop, I mentioned in a previous video that I customized my shell, but I didn't really tell you guys how I did it. Um, aside from the unicorn here, which is awesome, you can see that my shell prompt is actually really unique. If you use Linux by default or Linux distribution without changing anything, it's probably not going to look like this. Just to give you guys a walkthrough of how I have mine set up or what these different things are, I do, of course, have the time right here. So if I do something like ls, we can see that at 2.59, I ran the ls command. And then at uh, 3.02, I ran ls-l. Just gives me some kind of context with the commands. Now normally, your command is going to be on the same line as your prompt, but there is a way to put that down one line below, and you can customize your prompt to be anything you want, a unicorn in my case. Here I have the number of jobs I have in the background, but that's not something I'm going to go over in this video. So just know that that's the jobs that I have in the background. Then I have the name of my computer. In this case, it's Crusader. I name all of my laptops and desktops after Final Fantasy VI Espers, and that is one of them. And then I have a colon and then the path where my current working directory is. Now, I achieved that by customizing Bash. So how do we do that? Well, before I show you, it's important to understand the concept of hidden files because that's required to know how to customize Bash because the configuration file is hidden. So if I do ls-l, you can see I'm in the notes directory right here and I have two different files. So if I go back to the home directory and do the same thing, you see that I have all the folders in my home directory, but that's all. If I do ls-a, I get a lot more results here, all kinds of different files that were not here before. And I believe I mentioned it in this series so far, but just in case I might not have, a period in front of a file name makes it hidden. So anything with a period will not show by default unless you do ls-a, which you can combine with ls-la for long listing and also to show all. Now, in my case, I have the ls command aliased to ls-l, which means doing ls is simply the same as doing ls-l. I'm going to go over aliases in a future video, but don't worry about that. I just wanted to mention that in case you're wondering why your output might look different than mine. But the takeaway here is that a file with a period in front of it is hidden. Now, if I scroll up, you can see that I have a .bashrc file here in my home directory. And I'm assuming you do as well because I don't know of any distribution that doesn't give you that by default. But what's in this file? So I'm going to use nano, and I'm going to edit that file. Now you do want to be careful here. You don't want to save any changes, but it's perfectly fine to take a look at it. Now my bash rc file is going to be completely different than yours. You're not, I have all kinds of customizations here that you probably would not have unless you went online and found mine and applied it to yours, which you're, of course, welcome to do. But basically, any line in this file that starts with a numeral symbol or hash sign right here is ignored. So this is just a little note or a comment telling me what it does, the PS1 prompt right here. And that's this line right here, which goes on for quite a while, is actually what customizes my bash prompt and makes it look the way that it does. There's actually online generators you can use to generate your PS1 prompt. Then as I go through, I'm setting all kinds of options. And, and these options are things that Bash itself understands. So Bash knows hist control, which basically means in Bash history, don't add duplicate lines or lines beginning with a space. We haven't gone over history just yet, so 
of course, you might not know what I'm referring to, but basically we have all kinds of options here. And it goes on and on and on and on. I have all kinds of different customizations here. This is the result of years of finding different things. And just goes on forever. Well, not really forever, but you get the idea. That's not what yours looks like though. So if I had to guess, yours probably looks something like this. So I'll do nano Etsy scale dot bash RC. So basically this, this file dot bash RC is in Etsy scale. I'm going to press enter. And I'm assuming that whatever you see on your screen, which may or may not be the same as mine, is most likely going to be the same as you see when you check the bash RC file in your home directory. So why is that? So the Etsy scale directory, I'll go ahead and list the long listing here, has some files in here, not just three in my case, not too much, but basically when you create a new user, by default, it'll take the files that are in Etsy scale and put it in that new user's home directory. So these are basically like default files. So when you first logged into your Linux system for the very first time, or actually when the user account was created, the bash RC file or the files you see in this directory would then be copied over to your home directory. So you get a default bash RC. And here you can see that there's some customizations that are the same, like the hist control, for example. But you can see there's a lot of other options here that were not in mine. Mine is very custom here, so it's not going to quite match this one. But you get the idea. This is your distribution specific customizations for bash. And you can, of course, customize yours accordingly. So if, for example, you didn't like something, you could probably remove the line. I, I recommend you be, you know, take some caution with that. So you don't remove something and have something wrong. Like for example, if I was to go ahead and remove this FI right here, which is basically ending an if statement. So an if statement starts with if and ends with phi. So if I delete that in the one in my home directory, then I'm going to get an error when I open up the shell. And if you remove the or edit the one in Etsy scale and that one's wrong, then all new users will get a wrong file when they first have their user account created. So um, definitely exercise caution, but I wanted you to know where you would go to customize bash, which is the shell that interprets your commands. The .bashrc file is the one you would edit. You probably want to edit the one in your home directory. Don't edit the one in Etsy scale unless you want to change it for everyone when their new user accounts are created. So what I'm going to do now is close out of here, clear the screen, and I'm going to give you guys a practical example. So I'm going to edit my .bashrc. So I'll do nano dot bash RC. That's what I would do to edit mine. And that's what I want you to do as well to follow along. But what I'm actually going to do instead is I'm going to edit the one in Etsy scale. And the only reason why is because that one's the default one and mine was already customized. And the change I want to make is already there. So um, I'll do nano against Etsy scale dot bash RC, but you'll do yours against just simply dot bash RC in your home directory. So here we are in the .bashrc file. Now you can ignore this little red warning here on my side. That just means that I'm editing a file. I don't have permission to edit. Permissions come later. But if you're editing the one in your home directory, you shouldn't be seeing that. But I want to create an alias. Now aliases are not something I'm going to cover in this video. I'm just going to give you one and then we'll talk about it later. But basically, I'm going to go down here. I'm just going to make some room. And then I'm going to type the word alias. And then I'm going to make the alias named C. It's going to be equal to clear. So alias C equals clear. And then control O to save the file. In your case, it'll work. In my case, it says permission denied, but that's fine. And I'll just sit out here, in my case, not save changes. But what that allows you to do is just type C and then enter to clear the screen, which is simply a lot easier than typing clear. Now, honestly, you can do control L so for example, ls, and I'll do control L, clears the screen. But now C, enter, clears the screen as well. So when you first start up a Linux command line session, the first thing your shell or terminal emulator will do is read that file, .bashrc. Now obviously there's more to it than that. You get into login shells, non-login shells, which are not something we're, are not things that we're going to talk about right now. But the takeaway from this video is that when you do open up your session, it's going to read that file and the settings that you have inside there 
are then going to be loaded into memory and you'll have that. So you can use the alias command that I gave you in the file just on the terminal itself without being in the file. It'll work. It's just when you close the terminal, then reopen it, that setting is gone. Whereas if you put it in .bashrc, it's read when you actually open up a new shell and you'll automatically have that setting applied every time, which is why you'd want to do that. Obviously, I'm not going to give you guys an in-depth video of customizing bash in this video because that's beyond the scope. What I wanted you guys to do is know where you would go to make such changes so that way if you do run into a situation in the future where a change is necessary, you'll know exactly where you need to go to make that happen. So I hope that was helpful for you guys and I will see you in the next video as soon as I have that uploaded. So subscribe if you haven't already done so and you'll be the first to see it when I have that one done. So see you there. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.